Hey, what's going on, guys? And welcome back to the Goldmouth Podcast. In this one, we're going to be shedding some light, like literally shedding some light. That's going to mean something later on if you hang on and watch. It's Kevin Nisbet, ladies and gentlemen. In this one, we're going to be talking about that Scotland call-up, the Euros, what the future holds, and all of that alongside my main man, David James. This is the Goldmouth Podcast, backed by Utilita. If you could help us out by following on Spotify, watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe, like, and all that good stuff. But in the meantime, enjoy. David James, welcome back, mate. How you been? He's making me off at the top of the show. <laughs> I cannot believe it. That, I didn't do it on purpose. I tell you what, it's mate just rolls off your tongue like like does, mate. I'm from I'm from down <laughs> I'm from down in Essex. We just say mate to everyone, so I do apologise. Kevin, welcome to uh, the Goldmouth Podcast. How yeah, are you, man? Yeah. You good. I'm good, though. Eh? All good. Yeah, keeping well. Keeping well. Yep. Aye. Uh, well. What have you been doing today? What's been on the agenda? Uh, day off today, so I just uh, took my niece up the park and just chilled really. Nice. Yeah, nice. nice. Um. You've you've come on leaps and bounds this season, haven't you? Do you, do you get recognised a lot now when you're out and about? Uh, well, I'm not out in Edinburgh so much, so people in Glasgow don't really know me. So it's <laughs> it's perfect for me because I I like to keep a low profile anyway. So yeah, head down. Do you get spotted a lot, David? No, because we've been in lockdown. Smooth. Yeah, but in general, and I wear a mask and a hat and big coat. Well, of course. Yeah, I, I do, but I I just pretend I'm someone else. Hey, you look. Has anyone ever told you you look like David James? Yeah, they have. Didn't, didn't you so, say that you started getting people recognise you because you was on Strictly rather than being in England? Oh, oh you know what? Woman. Right, so Kev. Can I call you Kev? Yeah. Hi. Right, all right. So, Smith, we've got this thing about mate. Well, I have anyway. If someone just calls you mate, then I think it's like a throwaway comment. If you're good friends with someone like Smith, I've got to say Smith. How you doing, Smith? Not how you doing, mate. And things like Strictly Come Dancing, we're not supposed to talk about things like that. And then Smith started off with, how you doing, mate? Do people recognise you from Strictly? You're going really well. <laughs> uh, Smith's also just had a baby. It's been a couple of weeks. I'm a bit rusty. So this He's is a bit rusty. He's spoken he, a few weeks. It's about a month now, isn't it, actually? Um, yeah, the, the late nights are getting to him. He's, he's letting it slip. But yeah, I, mean, I, I did. That's a, that's a crazy thing. I mean, uh, as you say, Kev, you're going to experience all this, especially if you get to kick one of these balls around in the uh, in the summer. Yeah. The the weirdest thing, especially international football, the weird. I say weird. They're not weird people in in, in general, but not your general football fan demographic. Yeah, you know, like the uh, the old age pensioners turn around with me with strictly. And it was like, oh, I thought you did really well. <laughs> thinking, really? <laughs> so, <laughs> in answer to your question, Smith, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 it's good. Um, um, buying cereal at the supermarket was never the same again. What, what is your chosen cereal? Like, if you don't mind me asking, your go-to. Well, I, I've, I've been going through different phases. I, I'll buy two packs of different cereal and mix them. I, I, I don't know about you, Kev, what your uh, your eating habits are, your dietary habits, but I don't I don't drink milk. I haven't got any intolerance to milk. I just don't like milk in the yeah. morning, so I just put hot water on it. So I, I look for a cereal which kind of melts. <laughs> He's, my face, Kevin's face... You, so hang on, you put hot water on your cereal? Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure? Well, it's low fat. Well, of course, but... And also you get the full taste. You don't get the taste of milk. But... Where, where and it's easy. So when you, when, you, when you wake up in the morning and you boil the kettle, you pour some in your coffee cup and there's some on your cereal, job's done. I've not wow. that. Nah, me neither, mate. Like, I keep saying, mate. Dan, Dan's going to have to... <laughs> Dan's gonna to have to clip that one up and put it out on Twitter and see if anyone anyone agrees with that. Um, in terms of uh, obviously this season done really well for Hibs, um, you've got your 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 Scotland call up. How was your how was your debut? Dream yeah, country. Uh, of course, it was a, a bit nerve wracking, but I don't really get. Well, I do get nervous, but in probably in a good way. Uh, you get that kind of butterflies, yeah. and I think it just kind of capped off the journey that I've been on so far. Uh, it was an all landmark for me to hit, and I've hit it, and it was time for me to try again the Euros as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, tell us about when you got the call. Like, was you expecting it at all, or was it a complete surprise? Uh, you off at all? Well, I wasn't, I wasn't in too great form, to be fair, before that. Uh, so it was kind of a bit right. unexpected. Uh, but uh, the gaffer pulled me in uh, in the morning, getting called up and told me, and it was just, uh, it was just I was just buzzing, obviously. Uh, get told now yeah. and the lads in that and it came out and walked into the, the dining room and the lads were gone mental and that banging the tables and that because obviously they knew how much I 
I wanted it and deserved it and that and that uh, was just uh, it was a great moment. Yeah. Because Kev, I just I don't know if um, this is going to ask you this question. So that when you get on the pitch, you make did it fulfil your dreams? I think it did. Yeah, it did. Obviously, you're missing the fans as well. Like that was mm. probably one of the biggest ones I've missing. But I think it was just it was just a dream come true. Obviously, if mm. you're growing up, and you're a footballer, you always want to play for your country. And mm. for, for me, considering what I was three years ago. Yeah, I think the journey I've been on, it was just, it was just a dream come true and I was absolutely buzzing. Absolutely, because it's interesting you're talking about your, your teammates banging on the tables. <laughs> I mean, they weren't doing that just for fun. They knew, obviously, as you said, that you sort of had this this desire to get selection. So, because uh, I felt, and I think, again, so differently, I had this image in my head that playing for England was going to be, I don't know, <laughs> I was waiting for fanfares and fairies to start flying around my head, you yeah. know? And then we, we win the game 2-0 and at the, when the final whistle went, it was kind of like, that wasn't what it was supposed to be like. Mm-hmm. And it, rather than going, yeah, I've played for England and kept a clean sheet, it was like, hang on a minute, something's missing. Yeah. Mm. But if you enjoyed it, I mean, that, that's fantastic. And against yeah. Faroe Islands as well, yeah? Yeah, Faroe Islands, yeah. So probably it's a good game to come on to as well. Have a, we'll have, have a lot of the ball. No. It's just one of the ones, as soon as the ball comes to you, it's your first pass, you need, you need to keep it. You need to keep it simple, and I've done that, and I thought I gave a good account myself to fair. So, nice. that takes on, and Happy it's in the Steve Clark's mind for the Euros. Absolutely. So obviously, so you get the call up, um, you join up with the team. What was the? How was the first sort of experience with the camp? What was that like? Well, it's hard because it was during COVID, so it's like your kit's right. outside your room. Uh, you need to bring it in, obviously training it, go right to your room, shower, put your kit in, then you're back in your room till lunch. And the same with dinner, so you yeah. don't really see the boys training on the way to matches and uh, at dinner times and that as well. But all the lads were great with me uh, as soon as I came in. Uh, yeah. But it was just it was just a surreal experience. Like I'm sitting at dinner with boys like Scott McTominay playing the Premier League, and I knew yeah. I knew Kieran Tierney as well for when I was younger. But what like, Andy Robertson's won Champions League, Premier League, and it was just yeah, it's mad. Just kind of try to pinch myself sometimes when I'm there, but. I just kept thinking myself myself, well, I deserve to be here and I'm, I'm here in merit. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Um, was there any like standout characters in the team? Any jokers or yeah. anyone that made you feel sort of feel comfortable as you came in at all? Oh, he's quite funny. On? Ollie McBurnley. Yeah. He's, uh, he's, he's mental, to be fair. He's just always... Mm. He's like a genius old bunny. He just never runs out of energy at all. Yeah, he's just always trying mm. to make pranks and stuff like that. And, of course, it's, it's great for me as well because it helped me set on a lot as well by like doing like a wee prank in me. Like, I think there's one where uh, he's he's got like, a, a bin full of water and he just obviously tipped it mm. towards my, my door and he just like banged <laughs> my door. So I'm just obviously like first call up. I'm like, oh, no, like, what was happening? Yes, I went to the people and need these here. So I'm like, must be. Must be my kit for the next day, so I've opened the door and the water's went all over me. Um. So I'm looking, I'm looking about like, where is he? Like, like, who is that? I'm shouting like, who is that? And, that? and he's just behind the door, just videoing me. And he's put it in Snapchat <laughs> and that, so it's just stuff like that, it just kind of helps you settle in good. Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, Steve Clark, you've met Steve before, right? No. You hadn't, but what was, what was your first impressions of him as a manager? I think he's a very tactical manager. Very good to be fair. Uh, he welcomed me as soon as I come in as well. Like, he was just, mm. even like doing like video analysis, it's so tactical and so like, technical and the way they play and how to affect their game as well. Like, it's, a, kind of, it's probably an eye opener for, for the next step for me as well, which the full experience was uh, for me. But I thought he was, he was great from start to finish. And mm. I can see why he's, he's in the Scotland mm. job. And he was obviously tipped for the Celtic job as well. But I can see why because he's a great manager. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. So obviously, next uh, next aim is to sort of stay in the squad and, and, and go to the Euros, really, isn't it? Um, if you get there, DJ, have you got any advice for Kevin <laughs> in terms of like preparing for obviously a major tournament? Is there can you prepare for it? Can you prepare? Well, I mean, there, there is a, there is one game that sticks out in my mind. I'm not sure if I want to give you too much advice for that, but yeah, um, I mean, the, the, it's like you said. I mean, what, what I would love listening to there was the uh, the, the banter, the camaraderie between the players, because 
it's one of those things, if you haven't got it, then it becomes very sterile. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that you go around tipping water on all your mates. I wouldn't suggest that to start with all your mates, all your teammates, <laughs> to rephrase. Um, but yeah, the we, and hopefully, you know, with lockdown sort of slowly coming out, sort of slowly coming out of lockdown, then when you get into the, the finals, you could be in a much more normal situation where you won't have to be sat in your room uh, essentially quarantining. But it's how you manage time. That's the key thing. If anything, lockdown, and if there is one positive from it on a performance level, it's how you manage your time now because you can't go out and do everything. Because mm-hmm. Scotland's lockdown has been longer than uh, the UK, uh, than England yeah. for, for, for quite mm-hmm. a while. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, managing time because you literally wake up, have breakfast, train, and then you're in your room. You know, you probably have loads of videos. You can watch games, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we used to play cards me and Michael Owen, we used to we used to literally turn up, have lunch, go my room, uh, an hour, yeah, cool. We sit there until training, go training, have a shower, have dinner, back in the room, play cards, and then <laughs> right, it, go to bed. To a certain right. degree, do you need to take your mind off of the football? Would you say? To yeah, well, this is time management. I mean, yeah. Kev, I, I don't know what you do with preparation for games. I mean, you can you can watch the opposition. Obviously, nowadays it's the the uh, the access to to video through analysis through for your own laptop or phone even. Yeah, you could do that, but then you could spend all day just numbing your head about football. I think at times you just have to draw away from it. Yeah. Watch a movie rather than reading a book. Mm-hmm. Obviously, play the PlayStation rather than the Xbox. Um, yeah, and, and, and try and enjoy it. I mean, ultimately you've got to try and enjoy it, but at the same time with fans as well. One of the difficulties is kind of like doing something which you do week in, week out and doing very well to get you in the squad and then thinking that you need to do something different because you're in front of a different audience. Yeah. Well, the reason you're there is because of what you do. So just do what you do in order to sort of keep you there. Do you know what I mean? So what was your what was your first memory of um, a major football tournament like when you were growing up? What was the first one that you remember seeing? I think the last time... Was it a World Cup or was it Euros? I was one, I think. I think it was 1998, I'm sure. I'm so you was. do you remember that one or have you? No, I was, I was one year old, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, see, my first memory was my first memory was Euro '96. Well, I was I was about for '94, but England weren't in that one. But Euro '96 was my that was my tournament that I fell in love with sort of football. I mean, Scotland were obviously in that. Uh, mm. Gaza, Colin Andrew. Yeah. We've seen that clip. Anyway, um, but yeah, uh, World Cup '98, Scotland were there as well. Um, and then there's been this big gap, isn't there? But you mentioned yeah. some of the players that are playing Premier League football, Champions Leagues. Um, obviously, yourself's part of that mix now as well. Um, they've got a fairly decent squad up there at Scotland, and that's obviously merit. And you, you're in, you're back in the big time. How does that feel to see your country amongst essentially the elite in Europe now? Oh, it's massive. Uh, mm. Especially, especially even even the players I've had previous, and they've not been able to get to a, a tournament. It's, it's been quite scary to be fair. Uh, yeah, but I've, had, I've had a lot of decent talent and decent squads, and they've just not been able to do it. But yeah, I was absolutely oh, yeah. buzzing when I seen uh, that the boys got to Euros, and me just sitting watching it was thinking that like, I need to get there. Like, it just, it, it, it just gave me that drive. So you're in the Euros now. As it feel to be, you know, potentially coming up against some world class talent. You've obviously watched some of these players playing yeah. Champions League football from your sofa sometimes, and. Potentially, you're going to be in the same ground, sitting in the same place, or even on the same pitch. So, like, in terms of your career, I know you mentioned it a few years ago. You was here, but now, do you feel like it's been a bit of a a whirlwind, and suddenly you're you're playing at the top? Yeah, it has. I feel. I think it's just kind of I've just blinked, and it's just I'm here now. I feel like I'm I'm just a type. I just take a game at a time. Just play the game, and then look forward to the next game, the next game. And then all of a sudden, I'm sitting here. And, I've got a good chance of winning the Euros, and it's just surreal. Yeah, no, that's, that's right. Yeah, do you do you put your like I call it success? It is success because you, obviously you're making your way up. But like, do you put that down to yourself, or do you have? Is there like a, a mentor behind the scenes, a manager that you're leaning on that's giving you advice? Uh, I'd probably say I've got a good group around me, which is mm. when I did get released at Thistle, like. I was like, I was down. I was thinking, this, this is it for me, and they kind of brought me back up. Uh, and I had chances to go part time after getting released of Thistle, and 
I ended up taking like I was getting offered peanuts to go to the F, but they were still full time, and I still had I got got to the point where I still had confidence in my ability that I would bounce back. And I think there, there's been a lot of doubters over the years as well, saying I was like one of the worst strikers to ever play for a club in that yeah. few times. And I'm just like I was getting played right wing, I was getting played right back sometimes as well. And I just think I, I just had a really good group behind me that just kind of brought me up yeah. and. Yeah, I've got, I've got them to thank you, Bill, for this journey. You've obviously thrived on that as well. You always want to prove those people wrong. I, I bring it up all the time. Every time we do a podcast and I talk about a striker that might not have got chances, I always bring up Harry Kane as a prime example at Spurs. Like He was there from youth. He never really got his chance and kept going out on loan to Norwich's, Millwall's, Leighton Orient's, all these places. And, and, and now, look, like you would never have guessed this guy would be one of the, if not the best striker in the world. Like, oh, come on, see. Smith, hang on a minute. I will uh, say Kev, that, Kev, I will say he's that. A, he's a Spurs fan, right? You already, I've already <laughs> told you that, but just be ready for these little slips in there about right. how fantastic Spurs are. In fact, they're not going to qualify for that, Europe that, this year. It doesn't mean anything. I am not saying Spurs are fantastic. I'm just saying Harry Kane is fantastic. Would you agree, Kevin? He is. He's a great player. I, I wouldn't say the best striker in the world, but really, yeah, he's great. He's, he's got to be in the conversation, though, surely. He's up there. No, definitely. But it's just one of the ones that like, he's, he's not won enough, to be fair. How, how, well, Smith, give us some parameters. Give, give us some uh, parameters for best in the world, like top top five or top 100? Top five, all right. So not in any particular order. Um, obviously, Messi, Ronaldo, if we can class him. Uh, Harry Kane, Lewandowski, and probably on form, Kevin Nisbet. Maybe. Good hip What do you reckon? <laughs> he'll take it, won't he? Hopefully, oh, Steve yeah. Clark's watching. He'll be like, oh, he's Scottish. I'll, I'll put him straight in there. <laughs> Haaland. Well, the guy, oh, yeah, the guy, the guy hasn't scored for seven games. Who? Haaland. Haaland. Yeah, but he's, he's doing bits. No, he's actually well, off. Okay, I mean, he's my, I, I, prefer him, I actually prefer him to Mbappe. Yeah. I have to say this simply because the stats are pretty similar. Um, and he's got, I think he's got a year or two years on, on Mbappe, but mm. he hasn't scored for seven games. And the interesting thing about his stats as well, and if you don't know this already, Kev, I love stats. Um, I love the stat. He has only scored one goal in a game five occasions this season. All the other goals have come in multiples, doubles and trebles yeah. and stuff like that. So when he's, when he's, when he's hot, he's hot. Mm -hmm. But when he's not, in terms of the Euros, which which game, it's probably a silly question, but which game in the group are you looking forward to most? It's obvious, isn't it, surely? It's obviously England. No. It's obviously England. It's going to be such a good game. I can't wait. I can't wait, is what I'd say. That's terrible, isn't terrible. That accent. was terrible. Do you, yeah, I won't do it again, don't worry. Uh, when I do all my videos and stuff, because I do all these, these, this YouTube thing, um, Kev, but um, when I do like lots of like, voiceovers, when we venture up north, I attempt to do a northern accent, but the comments just rib me every time. It's just like, don't, don't do it. So I won't do it anymore, I promise. Um, in terms of Scotland, do you do you fancy them to get through the group? You got I think, to I think you need to. You've got to go in. Anything, anything can happen. You know what I mean? Like, make it like a draw, then you could, you could draw, then lose the second game, then win the third game and you're through. You know what I mean? Just anything can happen. Go four so points. Yeah. I think getting there, it's just, it's not as if it's like, we're just there to make numbers up. We need to go and think that we can try mm -hmm. and get through this group. In if let's say Scotland go the whole way, what what player would you like to come up against most? Just for experience, or just to say that you've been on the same pitch as Ronaldo. this player or this player, so. Ronaldo. Yeah? yeah, share share a pitch with Ronaldo. Who's the greatest player you've shared a football pitch with, DJ? got to be quite a few. You could... uh, that, that's a subjective question in many ways. One is, who's the greatest player and what pitch are you are talking about? I don't think I, it I played, I played five side in Pakistan with Ronaldinho. Well, that's, there you go. But I've also played against him and he scored a free kick against me in the in the Europa League. So, um, yeah, Pete Ronlove, Anfield, hat-trick for Coventry. That was a good performance. What <laughs> a great play. Pete yeah. Ronlove was a baller. And, the thing is, Kev, right, so, and again, this is, this is funny. <clears throat> I've been in been good teams with good players 
and it's the end of the game. What you just said there about Ronaldo, and you, you see it on the telly sometimes when you, you, the camera pans to someone, the goal scorer, and he's going, and he's pointed. The yeah. guy's gone up to him and said, can I swap shirts? And he's like, no, I've, I've promised it to someone else. This guy, <laughs> <laughs> everyone running around trying to get shirts. And now, I mean, nowadays, probably Ronaldo's got five shirts in a locker. Mm. But mm. yeah, but yeah, Ronaldinho was, uh, was pretty good. We're going to move on to, uh, there's something that we do called Football Freeze. Um, and we still haven't nailed this down yet, have we, David? In terms of, <laughs> um, we, we say this every time, but we're just gonna we're just gonna go into it. But um, we're gonna imagine that your your um, your your phone has been wiped, but you've got the chance to keep three numbers in the football world. Um, what three football contacts would you keep? It can be players, managers, present, past, whoever. Who are you gonna keep on your phone? Don't want to upset anyone, do you? <laughs> That's the fair. <laughs> I uh, probably keep he's, he's he's my best mate out of football and in football as well. Probably a guy called Scott Martin, who plays with Hamilton. So I'll probably okay. keep his because if I don't say his name then he'll probably be a bit raging at me. Yeah, he's gonna be upset. Uh, there you go, tick that box. <laughs> probably need to keep Jack Ross. Yep. The gaffer now. Mm. Uh, that's funny, Smith. I'm laughing because that's quite funny. The gaffer usually comes up quite a lot. <laughs> I think I think you need to find you... somebody that I saw on it to the good side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and my other mate got to keep Murray. Steve. A... Oh, okay, I was about to say, you, you, surely you want Steve Clark as well, just to keep keep an eye, keep nagging him for the. Ah, uh, but yeah. Who was the last one? Sorry. Yeah, uh, a, a boy called you Murray. Please wait on Okay. Nice. Okay, we'll nice. Okay. So that's your phone numbers. Um, you get to keep. You've lost all your possessions. Growing up in terms of like football, so whether it's a football trophy or a football shirt or whatever, but you get to keep three items from start to finish in terms of your footballing career up until now. What you're keeping? Uh, my debut top for Scotland. Keep that. Absolutely. Nice. Yep. Keep nice. That. Uh, I probably keep like my hat trick ball for my first match with my hips. Keep that. Yeah. Uh, what else? Probably keep my boots. I'll, I'll need them to wear them. Your, your boots, yeah. Yeah. What boots? What boots are they? Yeah, I've got a pair of Nikes, Phantoms. Phantoms, yeah. Are you are you are you a night guy rather than? I, the... I wasn't until about. Six weeks ago, I was I always wore Adidas. Like okay. I wore these horrendous boots. Like they're called Adidas Nemesis, and they look terrible. But I just so yeah. I, I just felt comfy in them. I used yeah. to get pelters after boys all the time, but I had them for like three years straight. And I've just changed over now. What, what colour? What colour? Yeah, they're like white and black, or like another zebra stripe. Oh, you, you had the white and black ones. Yeah. And oh, I, I love tell you what, I love them. The same the same pair for three years. No. No, they're not the same pair, but the same book. Well, I just kept buying them. But I was going to say, because I... Can you get them? <laughs> it's, I, I was watching some of your games, and I mean, you've got Mud, you've got AstroTurf, mm -hmm. and they are the quickest ruiners of a pair of black and white nemesis. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I, I just love them. So comfy. I've got a pair of them somewhere. <clears throat> so, Kev, the, the, the hat-trick ball, was it... <laughs> this isn't a goalkeeping problem. It's a, it's a hat-trick scorer problem. If you score a hat trick with a multi ball system, do you look for the ball that actually went in the back of the net, or do you just take anyone and accept that? Uh, I'd probably take the ball that I scored the last goal with, to be fair, because I, I scored it with like two minutes to go, so it was, it was the same ball. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> so I, just, I, was just, yeah. I was thinking about it. In, in the old days, it like in the old days, when they had one ball, mm -hmm. you, basically you could take it, you knew that was the one you scored the hat trick with. With multi ball, yeah. the goals, the hit that could be anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> So, so you know you scored with that ball. That's good. That's good. I like that. I like that. So was that was that on your mind as well? As soon as that went in, you were like, "I'm having that. That's that's my ball." <laughs> keep an eye on it, and yeah, yeah keep an eye. As on soon that as one. soon as it goes, um, just grab it. That's it. <laughs> I've got to watch the video. I reckon you were just running after the ball, <laughs> even when yeah, it went yeah, out, and you got another ball. And you just stood on the touchline like that, looking at the ball boy. I was, like, the I was actually trying to disguise it. I was like, "Can I look a bit that way and just like looking for it?" And I've seen it, and I've just got my dog there. Uh, <laughs> love it, love it. 
it's been a good season, isn't it? It's been very good. Uh, I don't think anybody expected us to finish third. Have, was you, um, have you been, you sort of come in, or have you always been sort of like the main man up top this season? Or have you just taken your chances and on form, you've sort of just been given those starts and well, been I think given the opportunity that's... to score those goals? I probably come in like we obviously paid money for me, so it's probably one of our marquee signings. And mm. I've come in, I've actually hit the ground running. To be fair, I, I did score a yeah, lot of goals yeah. at the start of the season, and I think that kind of put me probably as one of the main men. To be fair, definitely. So is it is it fifteen goals so far? Fifteen so far. Uh, not counting though, are we? We're not counting. Okay. <laughs> Uh, top scorer. Do you so? Do you do you think like this in in terms of your career? Do you think like this is the season? This is the season where it's almost like the turning point, and we're we're on a trajectory now. We're we're going up. We're we're going places. Yeah, definitely. I think when you get in this position, you're sitting third. You're on the grass by Europe. You're still in the Scottish Cup, and I just think like it's so important for us to actually finish third as quick as possible. Which means we can now start Absolutely. yeah start focusing on the Scottish Cup because we've been to two semi-finals this year and. We've lost both, and as it's it's very slow as a semi, but uh, I think for us it's just about just trying to get third place wrapped up as quick as possible. Yeah, yeah. I'll touch on Europe in a minute, but in terms of your, like your performances this season, do you are you overall quite happy with them, or do you still think you've got more to give? Yeah, I think I've probably got more to give. Uh, there was obviously yeah. a time after January I didn't play much, didn't play maybe five or six in a row. Uh, I think I was just down to the boys playing well and obviously the full carry on that happened in January and yeah, but I think I've obviously got a lot to give. I, I scored at the weekend there, so when when I tend to score after a wee drought I usually go on like a, a goal scoring run and hopefully I can do that for the end of the season. Yeah, yeah. Um Kevin, it seems to have got very, very dark in Scotland. I know, I was um, funny, I was just gonna put the light on. Yeah, do you want to... <laughs> oh, I've got a ball. <laughs> Either that, I'm okay yeah. to like it, but I don't know. This is the content that people need to see, you know. Professional footballers, light bulbs. There we go. Sorted. He's back. I, f- I forgot what you look like, mate. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, obviously you're looking to secure that third place. Yeah. Um, European football, how good is that going to be to give it back to the fans? You know, when the fans return... European football straight away. What's oh, that going to be like for them, Dream? I think yeah. I've, I've, I've played against them more before when the fans have been there. And it's, it's, a, it, it's unreal, to be fair. Like, it's just a shame I've not mm. experienced that while playing for Hibs, but uh, it's massive. It's massive to the club as well, financially. Like, yeah. we've, got a, we've got a lot of money, we've got a lot, a lot of revenue and a lot of TV money in that for it, so that's massive for the, whole, the club as a whole. Yeah, definitely. Um, and obviously, you mentioned uh, Jack Ross, your you, you gaffer there. Um, what's he like? What's he, what's he like to play under? Has he been a good sort of mentor? Ah, he's been great. Before. Like, I think if you ask a lot of people in Scottish football, we will probably say the same as me. He's probably one of the best managers I've played under. If I'm honest, uh, yeah. He's he's got like the right kind of change from man management. Like having a laugh with the players and that, then when knowing when to be serious and when to what kind of give, give boys a rock and that, and I, I, I like that to be yeah. fair. And tactically, he's great, he, he, he gets most weeks spot on, but sometimes it just happens like we get beat, we get beat, you know what I mean? But tactically, he's great, and he's, he's, he's built a great change room, and he's probably one of the best change rooms I've been around. Yeah, have you ever crossed that line with him? You thought, oh. <laughs> No, no, I'm just. It's, it's no, you, just know, you know, you know, you know, Wesley. Put your neck in the corner. Like, oh, no. <laughs> just, I'm, I'm just avoid eye, eye contact. Yeah, you, you must have had some some changing room. Um, uh, some managers like go off off the rails in the changing room over your years, DJ. But you don't like to reveal too much, do you? You like no, no. I mean, that, not that's... not not specifics because uh, I think what you know what happens in change room should. Should change, stay in the change room unless someone else brings it up and you have to correct a few facts. Mm. But yeah, I, I, I find it funny, but it, it, it's true, Kev, what you say, because you, you, you kind of don't want to be the brunt of the manager's unhappiness. No. Mm. Yeah. 
and I've had international managers who have not been happy with players. And it, the funny thing is, they go mad, and you'll sit there in tension. You're going, oh, "Okay, yeah, boss, yeah, yeah, can't, yeah, yeah, yeah." As soon as they walk out, you start hammering the person that they've been hammering. <laughs> oh, hundred <laughs> percent, everything. <laughs> Oh yeah, I got I got a fact for you, Kev. I've never been to Scotland, never. What? Never? Never been. I don't know if you know what I do, but I I do these videos on YouTube. You say you watch a bit of YouTube. You obviously, you 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 know who I am, obviously. Oh, hundred percent. Ah, there you go. Told you. Yeah, but basically, so um, I know that you don't, which is fine. It's absolutely fine. But <laughs> I do these videos where I I, <laughs> I I travel around the country. I say country because I haven't been north of the border yet but um it's called on the road and i basically just go to a different football ground every single week and I'll, I'll i'll rate the experience so um in between going to spurs as a season ticket holder I'll, I'll try and go to different like levels of football as well so non-league premier league championship all over the show but yeah yet to go to scotland um and when i say we rate the experience we rate things like the atmosphere the food and drink um, the value as well, how much does it cost, and the, like the facilities themselves. So, in your time playing in Scotland, which what would be your top three grounds that I should sort of be looking out for? And are there any like hidden gems? Because I say this as well because everyone's like, oh, obviously you've got to go to the, the New Camp and you've got mm -hmm. to go to the Bernabeu, like all these big things. Yeah, I know about them, but is there any like hidden gems in Scotland that people might, you know, is there like a mad atmosphere somewhere that we wouldn't expect it, for example? Yeah. that's where I want to go. You've obviously got Celtic Rangers. Like, yeah, it's, of course, uh, yeah. It's, it's on the radar. Uh, it's on the radar. Don't worry. I probably And Hibs, yeah. I'd probably say Eastern Road at a derby. Hibs. A what one, sorry? Hibs v Hearts. At Eastern Road. Hibs v Hearts, okay. At Tynecastle. Tynecastle's like, right. I'm quite so closed in. But the fans are right there. Yeah. So, uh, see, it's hard. Is there any lower, been, uh, like, been lower, lower teams in Scotland? That's what I'm saying. I've been in all the leagues and there's been like five other people at the game. And they're all at pensioners yeah. and that, eating pies and stuff, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> uh, it's just... sounds, like, sounds like me in Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> That's my kind of game. I love those ones where, it's, you know, there might not be an atmosphere, but you get to see so much more. You hear so much more as well. Like, it's fascinating to see things. And that's why, like, at the start, I mean, it's, it's, it's been done now. I've, I've heard it, but at the start of lockdown, when you, you watch, like, the top games, like, in the Premier League and whatever, and there's no fans and you can hear all the players talking. Mm. It's like, oh, wow, this is amazing. This is what it's like. But um, do you, are you aware of the crowd? I always ask this, but are you aware of the crowd when you're, you're, you're playing a game and can you hear everyone? Because it just seems so loud. What's it like as a yeah. player on a pitch, especially in a derby, for example, when all the fans are on top of you? Can you concentrate or is it a bit of a, a, bit of a nuisance? I think you probably need to kind of zone the fans out. Like, you obviously... If you're out to get a shy or something and the fan starts like slagging you and that, like you just you just laugh it off and that. But I am I'm I'm one for just kinda of zoning the fans out, prefer. Like, I don't really yeah. listen to them. And the good thing is you're a striker, well well you you, you can move about the pitch. David <laughs> you're stuck in that goal. <laughs> and, and you've <laughs> you've you 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 are going to get pelted all game. Yeah, it's interesting. It's funny when Kev's saying there about zoning out because you, you can't, I don't think you can eliminate fans. It's not about that. Mm -hmm. I think what mm -hmm. you do is you just desensitize yourself a lot. So you, you do something good, you can't, <laughs> I'm not saying you don't, but if you do something good, you kind of expect some clapping. And if you're just away fans, you expect them to be disappointed. So there, mm -hmm. there's times where you're in that little zoning out bit where you kind of open up and go, oh. go on, let me hear it. Yeah. Uh, it's when you haven't got control of that and then you're standing in the goal. And I remember at South End when I was at Watford, oh, I'd, I'd got my new gloves with my name on them and there was a corner and these fans behind the goal going, yeah, yeah James, you're this, you're that. And I've gone, <laughs> showed me glove, corner comes in, the guy scores. <laughs> it was like, nah, that's, that wasn't good timing. And you can't, then all of a sudden it's just abuse, abuse, abuse. But uh like you said, Kevin. I mean, if you can if you can muffle it, you know when yeah. you've done something wrong, you know you're going to get a bad response. Rather than it being every person telling you exactly how rubbish you are, you just kind of go, okay, well, I just get on with what I've got to do. But other times, woof. and more people. Yeah. Actually, funny, more people make it easier mm. because you can't hear the voice. Yeah. But there's that one yeah, fan like... who just oh, I've had that at Crawley. 
where one fan for 90 minutes was giving me abuse, telling me how much I'd let the country down. <laughs> it was like three years ago, and it's still going on about it. It's kind of like, what? Come on, shut up. <laughs> shut, please shut up. Time, anyway. to, time to move on. <laughs> um, Food-wise, is there anything like, like, is there any uh, food that I need to be looking out for, like specific Scottish traditional stuff up there that the fans will be eating? Is there yeah. a certain pie? Was there a, like... I think there's a, a Kelly pie from Kilmarnock that I've, I've never Kelly about, pie, yeah. Prefer, but I've not tried it. Prefer, like, but see now, like, all, all, the, all the food, and that's so expensive, but, you know, like 15 quid a person, you know what I mean, for a, a cold pie and a cold bottle. Fif- 15 quid? Nah, it's like, it's mental, like, the, the prices now, the stuff up here. It's kind of... Well, like... See that, like I look at that, it doesn't put me off. Yeah. It's like, right, well, I've got to try this for myself now. Is it actually worth it? Let's put it on, right? Kill Monarchs on the list. We've got them. Uh, We've got, uh, I, I, I got Danny Mier here, ready. So he's he's giving me the uh, the Kill Monarch pie, right? It's a, it's a steak and gravy pie produced by Brownings, the bakers, uh, since two thousand three. Uh, the pie has won a vast number of awards, including the best savoury pie in Scotland two years running, as well as picking up the best pie in Scottish football. He actually, he also says, actually sounds unreal. So, there you go. Okay. Would I pay fifteen pound for it? Probably not. But as part of a meal deal, as a coke, deal. possibly. But yeah, or it might be an iron brew, right? Do they, is it? Is they got iron brew on tap up there? Mm. Probably haven't they? No. I just want to cover a bit of grassroots as well from like back in the day. Tell us your your, your journey from a wee nipper playing football or how did you even get into football mm. to getting scouted to like talk to us tell us tell us where it all started who yeah. was the club it started probably at boys clubs like I, I played at Celtic boys clubs just like down the road and just used to go and just kick the ball about and that and like just play some games and that just kind of enjoy football and probably about I'd say eight or nine that's when I got scouted by Celtic so I got scouted by Celtic for youth and I was there, like, enjoying myself in that, like, until I was about 13, maybe 14. And then they turned around and said I wasn't quick enough and behind, and uh, they just let me go. I can remember just my mum just pulling up the training, set, um, training centre, saying, I've just phoned the guys, let you go, and I've just ran out my training gear and jumped in the motor. And just drove away, and that was that, was that really. And I think one of my mates, like Scott Martin, he was in at Hibs at the time. And he's phoned up and saying that I've I've spoke to the guy, he he'll get you at Hibs. Uh, so I end up going there. As a I think I was a centre mid I went there. I, started, mm. I I used to play certain defensive mid and uh, I went there and I was about sixteen. Then I probably said I got a really bad injury. But it was probably a bit stupid for me. But like see when we were younger, like we used to go up to like beach, but. Like, me and my pals and mm. that, and, and I've just fell asleep on the beach, and I've just burnt to the like, burnt thingy, but we had a game the next day, nah. so me and my mate are like, oh, no, like, and I've just, I've generally dropped into the right back area and turned, and just pinged a ball it, and my hamstring completely went, like, tore off the bone, and I'm just like, oh, oh no, Ooh. and that just kind of hindered me, really, uh, and then, kind of got back fit, 17s and that, still playing set of mid and just got a phone call saying that nah, we're not offering yet and we, we don't think you're good enough basically. That was a twins match at the time. And I think I was just, well, I was just like, I actually went and walked. It's mad how like, in, in, yeah, it's, it's crazy how like individual situations, like you just falling asleep on a beach could have like hindered your career. Yeah, exactly. I mean, fair play to you for like turning it around and obviously you, 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 you're a Scotland international now and it's like, it shows that you turned it around mm-hmm. but it's got to be so many individual story, so many individual situations. It's like the butterfly effect, isn't it, DJ? Yeah. Like all these tiny little things that can completely change. Yeah, and uh, I mean it. It, it is. <clears throat> excuse me. Because people, uh, uh, you probably get this when I watch, listen to people talking about young players and development, and it's like, is a young player is only going to get better? Mm. And you think, no, there are so many things that could stop him from getting better. And you've just yeah. described mm. one incident. Yeah. in your development fortunately you've been able to you've actually gone against what i'm saying by by getting better um mm. but yeah it, 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 it's so fragile the career yeah. um and you just got to enjoy it i mean as i say the, the fact your teammates the, the bit i'm still buzzing off 
is your teammates banging on the tables when you got the call up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because when when they know they, they're not going to do that just because you're a good guy, they're going to do it because they know it means something to you. So yeah. you, whatever your, your your focus or your goal was, a how you you got there, especially after you when you said a bad injury, I was thinking, oh, what would you do? A sort of ACL or something? Blimey hell, mm-hmm. ripping the muscle off the, completely off the bone. Yeah. Wow, never never had that ever. Mm-hmm. So you, yeah, top man. So top what? Man. So you come back from injury. Where was you after that? I was. I started. I just came back then. Obviously, I got told that I wasn't. I wasn't good enough on that, and uh, yeah, you weren't like, getting a contract and that. So, I actually went and I think I went and worked for two days in an office, and it was just I was just sitting in the office and just looking at the window, going, "This, nah, this cannot be me. it." But it can't be it. Like I'm just sitting there, going, "Nah." Then two days later, I was like, "Right, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm quitting." So I quitted that, yeah. and then ended up. My mum actually phoned one of the coaches at Partick Thistle and just said, "Look, can you just bring him in?" And because he had his own kind of like, he's kind of like a kind of soccer school thing. So he's like, "I'll bring him in. I'll okay. see how he is in that." And I went and done a few drills, and then he just phoned the guy right away. I've like, done some shooting drills and that. He just phoned the guy right away saying that you need to get him signed. So I went there, signed for under 17s there, for like pushing on to 18s, and I was hanging there for like three months. Scored about 30, 30 goals or something in like 18 games. and Just just your 30. Yeah, yeah just, just, 30. Just, just, just the 30, <laughs> yeah. Uh, then yeah. <laughs> up to under 20s in Thistle and like even about the place, like they say, is like you're the next big thing coming through in Scottish football and that. And I think then I was probably a bit young. I kind of thought I was a man, if I'm honest. Like maybe I was 18, 19, 20. I thought I was just like, like I'm, I'm just going to stroll through this. Like, didn't put the work in off the park. My attitude was terrible. Mm. Like, uh, just thought I kind of stroll through and play first team games and just get my move from there and that. And I was getting out too much. But like, it was getting to the point it was just like, us, us as a group, at like under 20s, we had a, a tight group who like loved getting out. So we'd go like, we usually play our development games on a Tuesday. So we'd go out right after the Tuesday night. We would need, need to go on the Saturday to do jobs for the, the, the first team that, and after that, straight out again. T- obviously looking back like it was just it was just stupid and that but I don't really re- regret any of it if I'm honest like I think it's I think me doing that back then is just like made it so much clearer to me now and I've just got that out of the way and I'm just like kind of like focused on that so I think the day mm. I was actually on loan to Dumbarton at the time that the year I got released so I, I went and went to air, didn't work out, went and went to the bottom, getting played right mid and that, and we were in a releg- relegation battle. So I got relegated for the bottom and, and part of this in one season. So there's a wee fact that I've got relegated twice in one season with two different clubs. <laughs> and I was just sitting going, oh no. But then I, I was thinking like, part of this in the championship is probably my time to play and just kind of try and yeah. put myself in that and get put in the gaffer's office and went, nah, but we, 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 can't, we can't offer you a contract. Uh, I'm just like, oh. and that's when I ended up going to Ray Fogles and signing for, I think it was like 175 quid a week, and I was like 21 year old or something. I think it was like that. Oh. Like, and I, I was getting offered like three times that to go part time and train like twice a week and play on a Saturday, but I just thought it was like, I'm going to get one one last chance full time, and as soon as I'm part time, then I'm just going to follow the game completely. It's really hard to come back to. Yeah. And then just for there, I just kind of rose up and it's just been a kind of up, upward curve. And I think I wouldn't have done when I was at Thistle and all like, the nights out and that, like the penny dropped as soon as I got released. And then for there, I just, like, just kind of curved right up. And it was probably the, it was, mm-hmm. it was a blessing in disguise. It was the best thing that happened to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's not been straightforward, is it? It's good. You've had a couple of like sort of setbacks. Mm-hmm. And it's, I, I don't think, like sharing your story, I don't think it's like. <clears throat> had these setbacks and you've realised that you've got to crack on mm. like I think you're just a young lad enjoying yeah. yourself as well at the same time and mm. I think we've all done that um, but then there are certain professionals at a very young age is there anyone that you might have played with when you was young like even younger that's gone on a lot further than where you are at the moment yeah you mentioned uh, Kieran Tinney didn't you this, yeah, uh, yeah yeah, uh, yeah he was I was at uh, Celtic when I was younger so I've had him for yeah. years and he just kind of went right up you know what I mean? But yeah, I thought he was going to say no, no. He was with me. He was getting the pound drinks. As well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
He's just been he's just been a bit lucky. <laughs> I wish he gets out of the bar, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's in, it's interesting listening to you saying that because when you talk about the sunbathing and then the the hamstring problem, you also mentioned the fact that your mum rang up. If if that phone call was not made, who knows what would have happened? But because of that phone call, we're, we're having this conversation now, yeah. talking about how well things have gone, and it's just one of those bizarre things. I used to I used to smoke. So um, things I used to smoke, and I, I, no one at Watford when I was a kid told me, uh, <laughs> would know that I smoked. And I, I got in a bit of trouble, and my dad phoned up Watford Football Club to my coach and told them that I smoked. And I thought, I didn't want to go in. I was like, right, I'm going to get sacked, so I'm not going to go in. Still went in, and the coach, Tom Wally, legend, he turned around and says, you got to give up, because if Graham Taylor finds out, you're going to get the sack. And it was kind of like, that was my warning. Yeah, and had my dad not done it, then Graham Taylor would have found out a different way at another time. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I it's slightly different to a big injury, but when you, as I say, when you're looking at how fragile things are, that phone call, well, that's a, it was probably the best phone call you've had, other than the the, uh, the Scotland manager phoning up your gaffer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, fantastic. I wish my mum had Tottenham's number. Just ring them up and just say, "Oh, can you?" <laughs> All right, Kev. Well, thank you so much for your time. This has been good. Been really interesting to hear your your, your story. Um, and I wish you all the best in terms of your career. Oh, yeah, you, you haven't asked a question. What's the question? The Go question on. was on the list. I, I want to ask, ask a question. So, Go on then. How has this season felt scoring against Celtic and Rangers? Oh. Uh, so I think previously before the, the Sunday, it was one of the games that I wanted to score in. But mm. I think as a striker, you need to... And you're, you're not in the top two you need to be scoring against like, the best teams in the league and I think that's one of the targets I set out when I scored against Celtic I was like I need to go score against Rangers now and I was yeah. so glad I've done it and you did it yeah. how, alright so how did it feel scoring against Celtic that was... <laughs> sorry 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 I didn't mean it I didn't mean it <laughs> oh, sorry. I was just I, the thing with me I just, I, I just do my job and just score goals you know what I mean so, yeah I think I've scored a couple this season against Celtic yeah, yeah, two, I think you scored two yeah. against Celtic and one against Rangers. Yeah. I mean, the, the, as I say, this is the interesting thing. So, Smith, when you're <clears throat> when you're able to play against teams that you support, mm. or in my case, or I'm sure with Kev, when you're playing against teams that you've, you've been involved with, mm. there's that bit where you kind of remember why you liked them or why you're with them. And then <laughs> you sort of walk out in the picture, it's kind of like, I go to Liverpool, so uh, I'm, I'm chucking this one in because everyone knows about the Anfield clapping the old goalkeepers. So you run out there and you know they're going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, as soon as that whistle goes, they all want you to concede goals. Yeah. But then you see the player who's left the club when he scores, who goes, oh, no, I can't celebrate. Well, the mm -hmm. fans want him to lose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he might as well celebrate. And then you can say, that's yeah. why I left. Because I can score against you, whatever. But I just I was interested to say, I didn't realise you were a Celtic fan at the time when I was looking at it, but... You've scored against Celtic and Rangers. The Rangers one must have been a bit more, a yeah, little bit more uh, it's, satisfying. It's, it's, it's just, I'm just doing my job, you know what I mean? Like, even even it's just Celtic, like, I'll, I'll, I'll celebrate. It doesn't matter like, if I've played for the club yeah. before. Like, I, I, I would still celebrate. You know Love it. Mean? Love it. Fantastic. Good well, way to end as, it, long, as long as you don't score against any English teams in the near future. Mm. Specifically, England. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Just any, any, teams, day, mate. any teams with England in their name, just avoid scoring against them. Then we'll be all right. Yeah, we're all good. We're all good. <laughs> no. Nice one, Kev. It's uh, it's been a pleasure having you on. As I say, all the best for uh, the future. Yeah, well, and, keep uh, an eye out. Yeah, for I'm you. sure we'll be seeing more of you. Definitely. Absolutely. Thank Cheers, Bob. Cheers. And well done for sorting the light bulb out. Cheers, yeah, thank you. You're laughing, so it's been.